so that you can see these ankle buttons right here. This is very important. You're gonna have them stand in a parallel position, not sixth position with the feet together, but parallel. Make sure that their toes are lined up. And the first thing that you wanna do is check that they're not pronating or supinating. You wanna make sure that they are fully grounded in their feet, that uh, two thirds of the weight is in the balls of the feet, and then a third of the weight is in the heels, but they're able to lift the heels at any given time. So what I like to do is make sure that the ankle buttons right back here, when they're standing up straight, are directly across from each other and that this tendon right here, the Achilles tendon, is not tilted in one way or another. That's going to tell you whether or not they're lined up. So the first thing I have them do is to the plie, make sure the knees go straight over the toes and that they're not gripping with their toes on the plank, and then pull the legs all the way straight and lengthened up through the quadriceps, down through the heels, and that they're still lined up. If they are unable to do a demi plie in parallel and straighten without letting their ankles go, without gripping on the floor, or without uh, letting their knees go all over the place, um, they, 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 that's what they need to drill until they have it correct. Next, I like to have them roll away. Again, we're still not using shoes because I'm looking at bone structure and make sure that we're not here in the middle of the foot, which is a dangerous place to be, but rather that we are straight up. So if you look at my foot in this position, what you want to have is a straight line from right here to the big toe. You should see a straight line there. Now, depending on the student's foot, you may or may not have that straight line, but you still want to see if you can find a straight line from the ankle button towards the center of the big toe based on the shape of the foot their foot may not look like it's in a straight line, but it should still be in alignment. Okay, so again, a straight line from the big toe to the ankle button, uh, not pressing over here, not up here in the middle of the foot, and not clawing at the floor with their toes. So if they can do that, then I would continue working on the rest of the strengthening exercise. And so the first one would be to just simply work through strengthening. I have my students do eight elevates straight up and down, in parallel position, and then eight releves in parallel position that they turn out to first. So we do eight elevés in first position and eight releves in first position. Then we go to second, just a small second. If it's too big, then they end up walking into their quads, and we don't want that. Eight elevés, eight releves. This is where they're going to start to cry a little bit, and at this point, you should really feel a lot of rotation in the seat and a tremendous amount of turnout. You want to really feel like that the inner thighs are pulling together and turning out. Uh, otherwise, again, they're going to be locking into their quads, and you really want to feel this in the inner thighs and, of course, in the uh, calf muscles right back here. That's the majority. You should really feel it mostly in the calf muscles. So you have two calf muscles. You have a calf muscle that starts right under your knee here, and it goes all the way down into your heel and becomes part of your big toe muscle. Um, that's called the gastrocnemius. And then you have another muscle that starts under the knee and stops right about here and joins up with the Achilles tendon. That's called the soleus. This exercise strengthens both the gastrox and the soleus. So after you do your eight elevates and your eight releves, then depending on your student's strength, um, either take a break or transfer to one foot. And we only do elevates in PPA. We do not do releves. At this point, the gastrocnemius is very, very sore. And so we're mostly just working the soleus. So I would start with four elevates on one foot, four elevates on the other foot, and then as they get stronger, you can do again another four elevates and another four elevates. Um, when they are already on point, they should be doing eight elevates in croupier on each foot. So that's my releve combination. The slower it is, the better. You do not want to be doing elevates this quickly. Now you're just bouncing and gripping and locking. The elevates should really be about this fast including the relevance so that you can spring a little bit, but that you're not just locking into your quads in this position. Because that's the first thing that I feel when I do them quickly is my quads engaging. So another good strengthening exercise from parallel, demi-plie, again, check the knobs and the rotation and the knees and the ankle buttons. Press forward, find the forced arch, elevate straight up, and then squish the heel down. Now, one of the things that I like to do is in this position, how
however much they're wiggling is going to tell me how strong or weak the intrinsic muscles within the feet are. And so if they are unable to hold this position without any sort of like wiggling or jumping, or if they're here and then they straighten the leg and there's a lot of wiggling and jumping just like this, that tells me that they are not uh, using all the muscles in their feet and they're not strong enough yet. And so here's a couple more exercises you can do for that. Um, elevate straight up, and then I like to actually put my hand under the student's heel and pull their heels up higher and tell them to push their heels down into the ground. So they are pressing against resistance against my hand to push the feet into the ground. Then I do it again, have them elevate up, and I make them push their heels down into the ground again with resistance um, until they are really able to lock into that feeling. Then I have them elevate up and I take my hand away and ask them to do it again. Um, and they have to create that resistance on their own. So I tell them, uh, pretend my hand is still there and you're still pressing your heels down or pretend that there's a big squishy orange under your heels and you are squeezing all the juice out of your heel or out of the orange, okay? And that is going to help all the little muscles throughout the feet engage and work fully. Another thing to double check in any releve position is that when they come down, they come down smoothly and controlled. Particularly in this squeezing the juice out of the orange idea, if they're wiggling or jumping or moving or they're going in big chunks, boom, 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 um, that's a sign that they're using their feet incorrectly and that they don't fully understand um, how to manipulate and articulate their feet. And so I would just encourage really, really slow releves until they have control over their feet. This is an exercise that you can do at the bar, um, incorporate it into your regular bar routines. Um, so this came from Galina Paneva. She was a prima ballerina at Kirov, and I got to work with her uh, when I was in high school. And this was her time to exercise that she did every day with us. And so you start in first position, and you turn you to the front, and then you just manipulate the toes quickly. So you're working the ball this quickly. For younger students, I would work smaller, and you're just working through the ball of the foot, and then you close in first position, and turn you again, and then turn you close plie, and then you would continue that combination on croix. So you're just working through the toes, and really, really feeling how high of an arch you can get, and then keeping the ankle high as you pull the toes down and close and tendu and plie and you would do that on claw. Again, so just working through the toes and really just pushing off of the floor and feeling the height of your arch in this position and close and tendu and plie on claw. Um, the exercise that I did training that really made a difference in my feet, we would work from fifth and you would do then tendu and close straight and tendu close plie, turn you out, close in plie, turn you out, lengthen the leg. And so this whole working through the floor uh, is gonna really help the student feel the length of their leg and rotate into the ground. Then from here, we do press to the ball as high up on the arch as you can and push the toes off, press down the heel and push the toes off plie in fourth position, find your really good equal fourth position, releve straight up, plie in fourth, and close. And now we're working with the back foot, tendu and close, tendu, plie, and out, and in, and out, and stretch, and ball, and push, and heel, and push, plie, releve, plie, and close. So you're going to start tendu and close, tendu, Close in plie, turn you out, and press in, really working through the rotation there, turn you out, lengthen the leg, press to the ball and push off, press to the heel and push off, plie in fourth position, finding your equality and your spiral, releve straight up, plie and turn your leg forward to close. And you work with the back foot, turn you and close, and two, plie, and out, and in, and out. Lengthen, ball and push, heel and push, plie, releve, plie, and close. And then to the side, do it again and close. 
first, the shift to the left, and the arch and in, and out, and right hand. Let go of the bar, find the arms fall and press here, and press plie, find your quality, right elbow up, bring your foot away from the bar and close in. Maybe and close, and plie, and out, and in, and out, and right hand, fall and push here, and push here, lower right elbow up, hold, 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 bring foot up towards the sky, and shift your knee. And that is a combination that I like to use for my students who are really learning to work through their feet and use their whole foot to do their fondue, particularly, particularly in this uh, plie position, you have more tendue that you can get. And you're really feeling the inner thigh once you hit the ground and compressing in. You should feel it all the way down the seat. Now this degage combination, I like to use for students who are getting ready for plants. Very simple, and it's just en croix. So you have a degage one and two and three, and hold on the four. Degage five, when you're doing pushing off of the floor and releve, and find your balance, hold the bar to the two, and close. And then again, one and two and three, and hold, releve up, find your balance, susu, and close, just one quad. And it really helps them learn to press off of the floor with both feet at the same time, because if they don't, they're gonna end up looking kind of like that, or they're gonna push themselves backwards. Um, it also helps them find balance on one foot, spiraling, support, lengthening of the toe. You're gonna see right away what that they're uh, shortening their point, particularly to the side. You get a lot of gripping and this happening, which is not pretty. Um, to the back, you have a chance to check their um, standing leg and their working leg and make sure that they're lengthening the door when you fall down to get those foot turns. So it's an awesome um, exercise. And then in my advanced students, I make them do the same thing. One, two, three, let go of the bar, releve up, susu, and close. So they have no choice but to push down and pull up at the same time and find their balance right away. So this is a TheraBand exercise. And this is going to strengthen the tibialis anterior, which starts right under the knee and works all the way down uh, to right about here. And this is a very essential muscle for point work. So I have a looped TheraBand, just a little uh, loop one in a, a wrapped around the bar. And I'm going to put it over my foot like this. Um, I'm going to pull myself away from the bar and I'm going to just simply work through this position right here. I'm not going to point the toe all the way. Um, as you can see, the band would just pop right off of my foot. But if you uh, just work through this position right here, then you are strengthening um, right around here in the front of the leg. Now that muscle is extremely important. Any dancer who has worked on point a lot will tell you that's one of the first muscles that gets sore and it's almost impossible to stretch. And so when you have a student complaining about it hurting, uh, basically you just have to tell them to uh, massage it out and do more TheraBand exercises to get the blood flowing. Now you do want to watch out for this one that you are not uh, gripping right here in the ankle. You're going to end up with a lot of ankle tension. And so while working this muscle, you do have to make sure that uh, you're lengthening through the back of the foot. I always tell my students to point their heel. Um, they understand what point your toe means. They know that that means grow the foot longer. So if we grow the heel longer and then work through this position, then we are not locking into the ankle. We are not gripping the quadriceps. We're still strengthening the tibialis anterior without uh, locking into the quads and causing uh, a lot of ankle tension. So this is another TheraBand exercise that you can do. Um, this is going to strengthen the big toe, which you use a lot in point shoes. Um, also, it's your balance point, it's your center point. Whenever you releve, your, most of your weight should be controlled by your big toe. So this just helps isolate that muscle. You're going to use a small band and wrap it around the big toe, and you're just going to point the big toe. Now, I would not encourage the student to point all the way down like this. They're going to end up gripping and feeling pain. 
um, under the arch in here. So what I would encourage you to do is just simply reach it long and let it come back slowly. The real exercise is not going to be pushing down, it's gonna be controlling the coming back up. And as you can see, um, you can see weakness in the muscle when the foot just sort of pops up like that. And so controlling to lengthen and then controlling to release. Again, do not tell the student to point as hard as they can. They're gonna end up gripping in their arch and causing a lot of pain. So you're really just reaching and isolating. Um, very much like the other exercise. It's not about how far you go, it's just about how slow and controlled you allow this small, maybe an inch amount of movement, very little movement here. Now, a lot of dancers have seen the basic TheraBand exercise where you point your toe and work into the TheraBand. Um, this is not an excellent exercise. It's actually um, pretty nasty for your feet. You end up learning to grip your toes and you're pressing against resistance. You end up with very, very bound up feet and a lot of pain under here. And so um, there are better ways to strengthen your point than to work uh, pointing down into the band like this. So this is another method of working uh, the, that exercise. So you're gonna loop the band around this way and then you're going to create some resistance with your other leg. Now you are also using your seat and you're going to press and control your foot this way. Now not only are you strengthening your arch in this position, you're really tapping into this muscle right here uh, which is your fibularis brevis, and that is the one that keeps your foot from sickling. It's the one that keeps you lined up in your point shoes. It's the one that engages in order to lengthen your leg properly. And so when you are creating this resistance and working this way, again, not only are you lengthening your leg, you're working the outside of the leg, but you're also uh, helping that muscle so that you don't end up with really sickled feet, and it um, is great for injury prevention. So the last couple exercises that you can do is basically just placing your hands against the student's foot and telling them to point their foot against your hand so that you can really feel how they are manipulating their feet. Um, it's excellent to incorporate into my plies on the ceiling exercise, which I recorded yesterday, and you should check that one out. Awesome for the feet. Um, there is always putting tissues on the ground and telling your students to use their feet to tear up the tissues into little pieces. That is going to use um, all the intrinsic muscles and the tiny muscles and all the different directions that your toes can move. Um, and it's going to strengthen those tiny muscles that are hard to access. If they can't do that, put marbles on the ground and have them pick up the marbles with their toes and put them in a bucket. They love it. Put them on the ground, put them in teams make them pick up as many marbles as they can and the winner gets to choreograph a waltz or something. They think it's the best thing ever. Um, make sure that when they do these exercises, they're getting full range of motion, but that they are not experiencing any gripping or any uh, stabbing, shooting pain. They should feel burning. They should feel a little bit of tingling. That tells you that the muscle is engaged and that it's being used. It is burning, and so they're going to get stronger from that. If you have shooting pain or uh, ice pick, as I like to say, uh, stabbing needles, that's a sign to you that maybe that there's a strain or a sprain and you need to look out for that. Check their alignment, put your hands on their feet, on their legs, check their muscle usage, um, put some ice on it. If it doesn't go away, go to your doctor. Um, because, again, your student's livelihood is totally not worth it. <laughs>